Hey there, I'm Mike, the founder of Financeable, and today we're going to work through a three statement connections challenge question, particularly a multi step, multi year question. So here's the prompt so we've got a pizza business that you've started. You've taken out a loan to start that business with a 10% rate. The loan is a $50 loan, and you've invested $50 of your own money. You buy a pizza oven at the start of the year for $50, it has a five year life, and you pre sell pizza subscriptions for $100 that won't occur until year two. In year two, you start the operations of the pizza shop and you acquire $50 worth of raw materials, essentially the inventory that you need to make those pizzas. And you ultimately sell all the pizzas to the customers and use up all of that $50 of inventory. Finally, you aren't gonna pay down any debt at the end of the year and you decide that with the money that you've made at the end of the year, you're gonna pay yourself a $10 dividend. You've got a 20% tax rate and the question here is, how does this flow through the three financial state? With all of that laid out, there are kind of two options here. You can just jump ahead with me, or you could maybe press pause for a second, read through this, think through it, maybe mark it down and like work it on your own, or you can just jump ahead. But I often encourage folks to really just press pause for a second, give it a shot, see how far they can get, see where they get stuck, and then watch me. But ultimately, it's up to you. So with that said, I'm going to pop this down and we're going to work through it. So when we work through a three statement connections question, we always want to start with the income statements. So our four steps here are income statement, then cash flow impacts, fill in the changing cash and the retained earnings into the balance sheet, and then fill in the missing pieces. And so we're going to start here with the income statement. Now, in year one with this particular problem, we took out a loan that incurred interest expense and we bought a pizza oven that has a five year life that will incur depreciation expense. So Let's record those and work through our income statement impact. So as you're working down the income statement, we want to think through, did I have an impact here? Did I have an impact here? Did I have an impact here? It'll be the same thing with the cash flow statement. And in this case, when we get to depreciation, because we have a $50 oven with a five year life, we're going to record $10, one fifth of the 50 as depreciation expense. And then when we move a little further down, we're going to have interest expense of $5, which is the 10% rate on the $50 loan. $5 there. And we have to pay taxes on our income, but when we are actually negative with our income, we get a tax benefit. So we'll multiply our pre-tax income by negative 0.2. And that gets us to a $3 tax benefit by virtue of essentially lowering our taxable income in that year. With that laid out for the income statement, we're done with step one and we can immediately jump over to our cash flow statement over here. And we can link in that net income at the top of the cash flow statement. And then we just have to work through the cash flow statement to essentially unwind any disconnects between accrual and cash based accounting. So, to begin with, here, we're going to look for non cash charges, gains and losses, anything that is essentially non cash in nature that we need to pull out of the system. In this particular case, we have DNA. So, we're going to reverse the impact of DNA. And the way to think about this, by the way, is that this $10 of DNA is lowering our net income, but it's not an actual cash outflow. And so we're going to add it back to get to ultimately cash flow from operations, which is basically just the money generated by the business in the period. Now, beyond that, remember we sold some pizza subscriptions, which I think is one of the best ideas ever in the year that won't be used up until the subsequent year. And when we sell those pizza subscriptions, the customers pay us. And so we need to record deferred revenue for those pizza subscriptions because we now have $100 in our hands that we didn't have before. So we'll record a positive 100 here for the deferred revenue. And then moving down to cash flows from investing, we purchased a pizza oven for $50. We funded this business in cash flows from financing. Remember, cash flows from financing is cash in and out from our lenders and investors with $50 of a loan and then $50 of new stock invested by you as the owner of the business. With that laid out, we've now completed step two of our three statement connections. And so what we need to do here is really just pause for a second because this is a part where we can go in autopilot. We can say, okay, the change in cash is just gonna be added to the prior cash balance. The net income is just gonna be added to the prior retained earnings balance. And ultimately we're gonna do this every time for every three statement connection question. So what we should be doing in the background with our thinking is, okay, what's the substance of these transactions and what's the missing set of pieces that I need to plug in and fill in in the balance sheet to complete this year? So again, we're kind of working mindlessly here to put this together. So it's gonna be the prior year plus this, prior year plus my change in cash. I get yelled at for using my mouse. Hopefully I don't get in too much trouble here. And then I'll take my retained earnings prior year 
and then add in my net income. And now we just need to fill in the pieces. And so what we need to think through here is what is the substance of the transactions that we incurred here? And if you just read through these, we have a loan that we took out for $50. That is going to come from our cash flow statement. And we're going to say, okay, well, we add $50 to our loan balance here. We also injected $50 into the business, so that needs to get added to the common stock line. And then beyond that, we created deferred revenue because our customers prepaid us, so we need to reflect that as well. And I'm just working from the bottom, you can work from the top, either one works here. And then finally, we have our PPNE that goes up by the amount of our CapEx. Now, I'm just doing this in Excel. Really, you do this on pen and paper, but I think it's just easier to see what's happening mechanically in Excel. I also have very bad handwriting. so. I'm going to go grab this, but remember that if you're doing this in Excel in any form, you just have to flip the sign. So if I purchase the oven, it's a cash outflow, but it's reflected as a positive balance on my balance sheet. Then I have my accumulated depreciation, which is going to be the prior period balance. And I'm going to add to that any depreciation that was incurred in the year. And with that, my balance sheet balances for year one. Now, when you're working through these multi-step, multi-year problems, the thing that I've seen people mess up a lot, and honestly, the thing that I've messed up a lot myself when I've worked through these over time, is that I forget that as we're working forward in time, we have to take into account the prior balances. So for example, if I have the change in cash here, I need to add the change in cash to the prior balance. It can't just be 148, for example, plugged into, or be the zero, but the zero just plugged into the year. It's the prior balance plus the change. So just remember with these multi-year questions, you're adding any changes to a prior balance. Now, with that all said, let's go into year two. And in year two, we sold our pizzas that we had pre-sold the prior year. And we're going to assume that they were sold for $100 because that's what the customer's prepaid for. In the absence of other information, we can work with that as, as our revenue. And so we'll record the $100 of revenue that was generated here once the customers ultimately receive their pizzas. And we've used up all of the inventory here, the negative 50 of inventory, to make the pizzas that were sold to these customers. Now, moving down, we didn't have anything about SG&A or research and development or stock-based comp, but we do have the pizza oven depreciation expense, presumably each year. So we need to record that. And we didn't say anything about paying down a loan. So we're going to have $5 of interest expense. And in the end, we have $35 of taxable income. Now we have actual taxable income where we'll pay taxes. And so we'll multiply that pre-tax income by negative 0.2. And that gets us $7 in taxes. And again, we're going to go right over to the cash flow statement. Now that step one is done, the income statement impacts and work through our cash flow statement. And again, in our cash flow statement, we're gonna link in net income. So I'm just gonna press control R and copy this over. We're just pulling the formula over to the right-hand side here. And then similarly, we're also going to add back depreciation here to reverse out the impact of the $10 of depreciation that's lowering our net income. And again, I wanna emphasize this point here. We're showing here that the $10 of depreciation would have lowered our net income in the actual accounting basis here, but we're adding it back because it's not an actual cash outflow. Now, similarly, as we get a little further down, we get to deferred revenue. Deferred revenue is going to go down by the $100 of revenue that we've generated. So we're going to have a negative 100 here. And the reason for that is that substantively, we are recording revenue, which increases our purported net income. But the catch here is that deferred revenue, the dollars from it which were generated in the prior periods. So we didn't actually collect that $100. And so we're going to lower the net income by $100 because we didn't actually get that money in this period. And we're trying to unwind to ultimately get to the actual cash that came in. And then with inventory, this is an interesting one. We actually bought the inventory and sold it in the same period. So we have no inventory impact to account for. Now, as we move down, we didn't buy any new pizza ovens. We didn't issue any new debt, and we didn't issue any new stock, but we did decide to pay ourselves a $10 dividend, and any cash in and out from lenders and investors will be captured in the cash flows from financing section of the cash flow statement. And so now that that's completed, we have our net change in cash, and we can plug that net change in cash and the net income into our balance sheet. And again, you can kind of let your mind go on autopilot in terms of plugging this in. And in the background, we should be thinking about what is the substance of the transactions that we've incurred here. And so I'll plug in the, take the prior period balance and add in the change in cash. I'll take the prior, again, it's prior retained earnings, and then I'll add in my net income from the year. And I have to work through these transactions now and incorporate them. So as I work down my income statement, again, with inventory, 
If we had kept any of the inventory, it would be captured here, but we didn't. The gross pp and &E will be the same because we didn't, I'll just copy this formula over with a control R. We didn't add any new gross pp and &E to this equation because we didn't buy any new equipment. So it's just going to be the same value. And then for our accumulated depreciation, remember we added in depreciation from in the prior year and we're accumulating that. So we're going to add in more depreciation, again, control R, to capture the incremental $10 of depreciation. I should quickly note, if you're on a Mac, it's Command R. If you're on a PC, it's Control R to copyright. Now, moving down here, our deferred revenue did change. So we have our deferred revenue that will decrease by the change in deferred revenue from our cash flow statement, because we're reflecting the fact that this essentially liability to provide the pizzas to our customer has been paid down. And then our change in debt, remember, was essentially the prior period plus any changes in the prior period. In this period, we have no changes. So again, I'm going to copy that over and then I'm going to copy this over. And now we have just the same debt and stock balances as we had before. The last piece of this, and you can see that the balance check is off by $10, is now capturing the dividend that we paid to ourselves as the owners of the business in the period. And with that completed, you now have a balanced balance sheet and a complete set of three statement flows. And I'm guessing if you haven't worked with these problems before, you're thinking right now, holy crap, this is a lot. And it is a lot. It's a lot to work through. The real trick with this is first and foremost, you need to follow the four step framework. So it's income statement impact, the cash flow reconciliation, autopilot, changing cash to the cash balance, net income to retained earnings and then fill in the missing pieces based on the substance of the transaction. So it's that, that kind of four-step framework there. And then beyond that, the other trick is just being methodical as you go through this. And if you are doing this on pen and paper, you need neat handwriting, just make it clean and clear. And I promise you that with a little bit of practice, these things get a lot easier, but you got to practice them to get better. In short, I wish you the best of luck here. We'll post more of these videos. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe down below. I'll see you soon.